Well, Sam Sonov is an all-star. Well, he's star of the week. And some Dale Hunter stories? Why not? It's an off-day episode of Locked On Capitals. Your Locked On Capitals, your daily podcast on the Washington Capitals. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another episode of Locked On Capitals. I am your host, as always, the insider of the insiders, Tyler Kuhl, here on this Tuesday off-day edition of Locked On Caps. Another one I know, guys, no game to preview. That's for tomorrow's program. And also because, you know, we're going to have an off day anyways later this week when I don't do a show on Thanksgiving. Apologies, I just don't feel like doing that, so excuse me, but... Let's just kind of have some fun today. How about it? First of all, we're going to talk about Ilya Samsonov here in just a moment. Star of the week. Second star of the week in the National Hockey League because he played pretty good last week. Helped out the Washington Capitals. We can talk about what that means for a (gasps) goaltending controversy in Washington, D.C. Yeah, just have some fun with it and poke some fun and maybe just cause you people to lose your minds, maybe. And you know what? I'm going to go back to an interview I did with Mike Stubbs earlier on. Not one that you've already heard. No, no. There was a second part to the interview. We talked with Connor McMichael a while back. No, we talked about someone else. Someone else, a former capital that's still working in the game very prominently. Later on in the show. And we'll take a look around the league as well because, you know what? It's been a minute and we want to keep you guys on tap on how good or how bad some teams are doing, even though we kind of do when we look at the scores. But, you know, just to kind of give a look at how the standings are. How about that? That's better, right? So, first of all, thank you very much for making Locked On Capitals your first listen and first watch of the day and every day. Free and available on all platforms. Yeah, I mean, because you know that, because unfortunately, kids, guess what? I haven't seen a single dollar from you paying for this program. I know we, we're pay-per-view program. No, we're not. We are not at all. Not not in the slightest by any stretch. But, first of all, I just want to say thanks again. Obviously, you guys know if you're listening, you can check us out. You can check us out. Check me out on the Locked On Capitals YouTube channel. If you're watching and you have to go somewhere or you just realize, wow, this guy is really ugly as he say he is, I'm just going to listen from now on. Favorite podcatcher. That's the way to go. Spotify, uh, the Google Podcast, the Apple Podcast, the Spotify. Um, there's other ones too, and you, know, you can probably find us on those as well. So anyways, the kind of the coolest news coming out of yesterday, the NHL released their, uh, like they do every single Monday, their three stars of the week. Now, yes, there were a couple players that had some good performances. Johnny Hockey, Johnny Gaudreau scores four goals and three assists in seven and four games. Good for him. Kale McCarr, oh, yes, three goals and two assists. Whatever. Johnny Hockey, by the way, got first star of the week. Kale McCarr third. But who is number two? But number one in your hearts, Ilya Samsonov. Two shutouts last week for the Russian netminder. Certainly showing why he may not be the goaltender starting for Russia. Excuse me. The Olymp- is it the Olympic athletes of Russia or the Russian Olympic Committee? The team with the Russian players on it at the Olympics, he may not be playing, but you know what? He says, I should at least be considered to play for this little shindig because that would be kind of fun. You know what? I, th- I think he's certainly shown his stuff. I mean, the shutouts that he had last week, I know we kind of looked at that San Jose game as kind of a, oh, it's only 22 saves. Listen, it was not quite that 16 safe shutout we saw against Arizona where we're like, well, yeah, you're supposed to make that many saves, Mr. Sam Sonoff. But the fact of the matter is this. He really impressed a lot of us, and myself included, how he played last week against L.A. When we really thought we, we, weren't, we were not sure of how good he was going to play during that road trip because you know he's going to have to play one of the good three California West Coast teams, three California teams. Obviously, Seattle didn't go by way of the Caps on the second half of that back-to-back, but we, you knew that he was going to have to play well against Los Angeles to give them a chance on that second half of the back-to-back. I'll say this, 30 save shutout, You know, not just because of the fact that he posted a shutout, made 30 saves. I think that's his best game of the season. I really thought he really stepped up, made some big stops in that game. And I said it after on the show the next day on Lockdown Caps here. I said, if he can show that he can put these games together, all of a sudden he may be a guy that you look to give more one-off games and whatnot, right? Well, then he gets the start against San Jose on Saturday. Post another shutout. Now, granted, I don't think the Sharks put up as many chances while they did outshoot Washington on Saturday night. He still had to come up big to 
a keep his team in the game. And also the fact when there was only two, nothing that second period had to make some big saves to keep that distance during the game. And then Vanacek, I don't want to say lays an egg. There may have been a couple in that game against Seattle. The yarn croak goal really comes to my mind because even though it was a great shot, it's a straight on shot, tough angle. I get it, but you know, it, it certainly raises some question marks here. And especially with a lot of days off here for Washington, you really wonder, Hey, is this, is this could be, do we have a goaltending controversy here in the district? I'm not going as far to say yes. Cause I remember the, I was, I had a show last year and I remember I spoke with Brian Mudrick of TSN. He broadcasts a lot of the home games for the Montreal Canadians. I asked him when Jake Allen was playing well and Carey price at that time it was kind of slumping a little bit. I said, Will you ever see Jake Allen get this starting goaltender or is there a goaltending controversy? He shot it down. Carey Price started to play bad. Jake Allen was good. Price got hurt and Montreal went to hold this array. And we really I'm like, man, maybe there is a goaltending controversy. And then Carey Price shut us all up and put near part near a Conn Smythe effort in the playoffs to get Montreal the Stanley Cup finals. So once again, that happens quite often where I'm wrong. And so was Mr. Mudrick and I, because we thought, oh, there's no goaltending controversy. And it's like, wait a second. Allen's the better goaltender here. Now, obviously, Allen's had to wear the brute of the workload this season with Carey Price still out and out for the foreseeable future as well. But in this case here, it's too, I think it is a little too early to tell. But look at the games you have coming up here. We mentioned, speaking of Montreal, Montreal tomorrow in Washington. Then you have Florida on Friday, another day off after that. Then you have two days off. Well, only one day off, actually. Friday, Sunday, Sunday of Carolina, and then back in on Tuesday against Florida again. Listen, now is this is a stretch where you're going to have to play your best goaltender. There's not going to be a time to say, oh, you know, we're going to see who wants to play and who we'll see. We'll give them both games or yada, yada. Or maybe you do. You're right. Maybe you do. Maybe you play both goaltenders. You play v, you know, VTech on Wednesday, maybe get his confidence back against Montreal. And then you play him, you know, one Friday, one Sunday over Florida and Carolina. And then you see whoever gets the best one on Tuesday, because after that, you get Chicago on Thursday. So I don't know. It's, it's really hard to tell. Sam Son have had a real good road trip. And you're right. Whoever plays Wednesday could lay an egg. Whoever could play Friday could lay an egg. Welcome to the National Hockey League, where gold, good goaltenders can have bad games. That's why I'm not saying I'm going with Sam Sonov as 1A. We're going to ride him forever. No, I'm not at that point yet. So that said, let's just kind of pump the brakes on a full goaltending controversy. But just know that Sam Sonov's there. And I said he was a definitive number two. Well, he's trying to work it into a 1A, 1B. Now, John Walton, we spoke with him last week, called him a 1B. I thought based on his minutes, we could consider him the number two. But once again, the way he played in that West Coast trip certainly caught my eye, and I'm sure caught the eyes of LaViolette as well. So let's just keep our eyes and ears open, because if Sam Sonoff keeps putting these good string of wins together, I don't know, man. Double V may be right in the double B for bench warmer. Now that did not make sense at all, but just don't think about it. So uh, we'll, we'll get to that later on. Obviously we'll also talk a little bit around the league, but right after this, we're going to talk about Dale Hunter, Mr. Dale Hunter's helmet. No, we're not talking about Dale Hunter's helmet, not the Twitter account. We're going to talk about Dale Hunter and what he's been doing after. Now, for those that don't know, Dale Hunter's the coach in the general, well, coach of the, London Knights of the Ontario Hockey League. Sorry, I quick turn my eye because right now there's a bonkers game. I'm watching this obviously on Tuesday night. I'm watching Columbus and Buffalo right now. And when many of you may think that's not a you know an exciting game to watch, it was 2-2 after 20 minutes of play. Columbus comes out with three straight goals to make it 5-2. And now Buffalo has come back with a couple goals. Dylan Cousins also scores. So it's 5-4 now going into the third period. I'm sorry. This is a very interesting hockey game that I'm keeping my eyes on here. So... Anyways, Tage Thompson also had a goal in that one. And according to the MSG thing that just flashed up there, he had a 100-mile-an-hour slap shot. So, hello, all-star game. If Tage gets there, of course, I'd be voting for Dylan Cousins myself. I don't know what it is, but I'm a, I'm a huge guy for the territories from uh, UConn. That's where uh, – Dylan, no. Is he – no, Dylan Cousins from – oh, gosh, give me a second now. Now this is going to hurt Dylan Cousins. I think he's from Yellowknife. Yellowknife, none of it? Where is he? Go. Gosh darn it. Go. Stupid scrolly thingy. I just want to see Dylan Cousins from. Where is he from? Whitehorse. Oh, yes. He is from 
That's right. White Horse is from the Yukon Territory. That's what I thought. I thought he's from Yukon. Anyway, sorry. Total, completely sidetracked. Yeah, so I'm watching this game right now. Aaron Dell had, had to replace Dustin Dukarski in that second period, and he's looked okay. Shots are like 22-19 right now, and there's this goals galore. This is what the NHL wants. Anyway, sorry. Let's get to Mike Stubbs here in just a moment. But first, guys, I must speak to you about Bilt Bar. Thanksgiving is coming up here, and you want a f- kind of healthier dessert? Well, Bilt Bar is the way to go. It's the new holiday dessert because you can feast on something delicious and feel good about it. One slice of pie has upwards of 300 calories, and that's on the low end, while most Bilt Bars are only 130 calories, 4 grams of sugar, with plenty of protein to boot. Replace the coconut cream pie with a coconut Bilt Bar or a raspberry Bilt Bar instead of the raspberry pie. Lots of good flavors to replace any pie. I don't think they have a pumpkin one yet, but maybe they'll come out with one soon, possibly. Just wait and see. If you get a chocolate one, just know that they are covered in 100% real chocolate. That's nice. New surprises all month, including a Built Bar Black Friday. Mark your calendars, guys, on Friday because Built Bar will have all sorts of surprises this Black Friday. Go to Built.com and use the promo code LOCK15 to get 15% off your order by using the promo code LOCK15 on Built.com. So now, let's quickly... Reverse back in time, if you will, to an interview I did a few weeks ago with the voice, the longtime voice, almost since I was born, the voice of the London Knights, ladies and gentlemen, Mike Stubbs. What are some some fun stories with Dale Hunter? Obviously, there was, I mean, Caps fans remember him because, A, he played for the Washington Capitals for many a year. And then he also led them to a huge first round upset in the 2012 playoffs when he had to take over for Adam Oates because Adam Oates, as we found out, is a good player coach, not a good team coach. And then all of a sudden he's like, you know what? I don't need to coach NHL. I'll just go back to London. Like, he just seems like, despite on the bench being very stoic, he seems like a guy that has more charisma than he gives off, at least in front of the media and whatnot. You know what, Tyler? He reads people as well as anyone I've ever met and can really appreciate what it is going to take to make someone successful. And he's somebody that is not looking for any kind of credit. He just, he just wants to help people become better players, better people. And there's, there are so many things that you could look at. He has, he's on track to win 900 games, either, you know, probably early next year, and he'd be the fastest one to 900. He was the fastest one in the OHL to 500 and 600 and 700. And if he hangs in long enough, he'll be the winningest coach in the Ontario Hockey League, and it will not be by accident. But he's not looking for any of the credit. Again, he's just looking to find ways to help his team win, to help his players become better, to get to where they want to, either in hockey or, you know, you want to go to med school or, you know, you want to become a police officer whatever it happens to be. So I guess the the two stories that come to mind that really illustrate his intuition as a head coach would be the final of the Memorial Cup. So picture game seven of the Stanley Cup final. So it's win this so game six, in your 16 or 05. This would be in 2016. Win right. this game, you're champions. Don't win this game, and you aren't. And the Knights were down two to one. And it was late. It was the last TV timeout. And guys were kind of hanging their heads a little bit. At that point, they'd won 16 consecutive games getting to this ultimate championship game. They'd already won their league championship in junior hockey. There's the Memorial Cup. You've mentioned that. And it brings together the best of the best, the best of the three junior leagues and a host team. And they kind of play a tournament. So the Knights had won every game in that. And Dale looks and he says, I got to mix something up. He had the best line in junior hockey. So he had Mitch Marner, who plays for the Leafs, Christian Dvorak, who plays for the Montreal Canadiens, and Matthew Kachuk, who plays for the Calgary Flames. They all played together and they poured in a ton of points. They were, they were ridiculously good. Very. And instead of putting all of those guys on the ice, he looked out on the ice and he said, okay, I gotta, we got to do something. So Christian Dvorak would take defensive zone face-offs on one side in the night zone. The Knights would get the puck out of their zone, and then he'd come to the bench for a change to go back out with Mitch Marner and Matthew Kachuk. Why wouldn't you? So Dale looks and he says, hey, Devo, stay out. Stay out. And it's just this little intuition. And the Knights win the face-off. They get the puck down the ice. 
and they get it into the right corner. And Max Jones, who plays for the Anaheim Ducks, goes crashing. See what I mean by all these former NHLers? Yep. Goes crashing into the corner, frees a puck up. A guy named Aaron Barisha centers it out in front. And who is there? A guy who shouldn't have been on the ice, Christian Dvorak. And he scores to tie the game. And the Knights go to overtime. And Christian Dvorak and Matthew Kachuk combine to score the game winner. And they are champions. That little intuition. And Dale will just say, it wasn't going right. I just, I needed to do something and that was it. But knowing that that's what you needed to do at that time, I don't know how you explain that. And then you mentioned the world junior hockey championship. Dale coached team Canada and team Canada came back against Russia. They were down three, one and they came back and it was three, three. And Dale says, I just think Michael scored in that game too. He did. He scored the second goal, went off his leg. See what I mean? He's in the right place at the right time. And Dale looks down his bench and he sees Akil Thomas, who may one day play regularly for the LA Kings. And he looks down the bench and he thinks, you know, Akil Thomas has scored some really big goals against us in junior hockey. I got to put him out there. Out he goes on a line he's not supposed to be on scores the game winning goal and Canada wins gold. So just these little things that he just, he seems to notice. He seems to know when and how it's, it is something you can't write down. You can't explain, but he does it. And it's again, one of those things why players who play for him tend to have great success. Do you, do you think, I don't know if you ever talked about this before, Mike, but do you think he's ever going to want to go back to the NHL or do you think he's just, you think, you know what, I'm happy here. I like living in London. I like coaching in London. Because obviously he probably could have coached last year in the World Juniors too if he wanted to, but obviously went to Andre Tyranny. But does he have any inclination in moving up? I mean, as a Knights fan, I would not mind if he stayed there forever and won a bunch of games with them. But is there anything a thought of that in his mind? You know what? I mean, you're never going to find out until it happens. And I know that Dale loves what he's doing right now, but when he went to coach with Washington, it wasn't like, oh, this may be happening. This may be happening. It was one day Dale Hunter's just been named the head coach of the Washington Capitals on an interim basis. So that's the kind of thing that would happen. So he's never going to let on. You mentioned he's very stoic and that's, that's part of his charm where if it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, well, that's that's something that's completely up to him. Yeah, of course, people remember that when he when he came back to London that next year, they ended up going to the Memorial Cup. So I guess he made an okay decision come back to the Knights. Um, what what is? I mean, obviously, people remember Hunter as this pest, the guy that would do lots of dirty things. There's the clip of, of course, him going after Pierre Turgeon in the '93 playoffs. How much of that intensity does he bring as a coach? Because obviously, you can't be, you know. You can't cheap shot people from the bench, I guess the best way to describe it. Like he, he's not that kind of guy when he's on, when he's coaching the Knights, like how does he bring that intensity to being a coach? Or at least do you think he more or less leaves that off to the side and uses his experience as an NHLer to coach? He's somebody that everybody would expect would, you know, be an outspoken coach and, uh, and be someone who, you know, who was, I don't know. I don't know what people expect. They, they expect to see what, you know, what they saw on the ice where Dale Hunter was never afraid to drop the gloves to come to the aid of a teammate um, where, you know, no one went harder to the net. Um, He scored a lot of tremendous goals, huge goals for the Washington Capitals. So that's, that's who they, that's who they remember. And you would think, sure. Okay. That that's the way that he would coach. Dale is somebody who is not going to come into the dressing room and address his team after a game win or lose until he's had a chance to review the video. Cause he wants to make sure that what he thinks he saw on the bench is what actually took place on the ice. And again, he's someone who wants his players to improve, to be the best people and best players that they can be. That's who he is. He is, he's one of the best people I've ever met. He reads people better than, than anybody. I'm just lucky to have been able to spend some time with him. That's kind of what it comes down to. What, I mean, like I said, you see him a lot more behind the scenes than we do. Maybe not as much nowadays because of, well, the pandemic and you yourself, you mentioned before we got on air here that you have not broadcasted in a studio at 980 AM since March of 2020, before this whole kit and caboodle went aside. What is something that people 
don't know about Dale Hunter. Something that you can obviously put on air here because obviously it is Dale Hunter and he is a he is still a character. What is something that people don't know about the former cap? Hmm. That's that is an excellent question. Um you know what? Does he not I, like poutine? Is this that's a very important question. <laughs> I once got a tie from Dale Hunter because he didn't uh, he didn't particularly like the look of the tie, and I tend to wear loud ties. And he said, "Yeah, you'd you'd probably wear this tie." So here, um, you know what? It's his passion. It really is. It's his passion for everything. Uh, Dave Gagne, who coached with the London Knights, played in the National Hockey League once summed it up. He said, if you're having a conversation with Dale or with Mark, it's going to be 99% hockey and 1% farming. They are still passionate about farming. They still grow all kinds of soybean crops. They still work as hard as they do at hockey as they do at farming. So I think a guy who has had as much success as he had, the fact that he's somebody who's going to go out and going to tend to his soybean crops in the summer, that might be one thing you didn't quite expect, but that's that work ethic. And that work ethic and the Hunter family comes from their father, Dick, and it comes on down. The values and the morals that have been instilled, you can't get those just by reading them in a book. You have to get those from coming from a great family. And they really run their hockey team like a family. You become part of that family. And a lot of times when he's won championships, you know, he said, hey, this comes down to everybody being a part of the family and, and wanting to play for each other. And so that's kind of how he's looked at it. And it's, again, been one of those elements to the success that he's had. And it's it's one of those things, too, because I still remember, um, I know we're obviously diverting away from the Knights and Dale Hunter, but I was thinking about Wendell Clark was Wendell Clark literally went home. I think it was home during camp or whatever. Had a, there was a problem on the farm back in um, back out west, and he literally left the Toronto Maple Leafs to do that. And that's just with some of the with some of those families, even these great players, these Hall of Fame worthy NHLers, they still are like, yeah, I got to go back and help out in the farm. I had a player I played with uh, in Port Huron who missed two weeks of the year because um, he was um, he's an of Inuit descent, and he had to go help with the whale hunt in October way up in the territory. So like that, that's one thing you always got to respect about those kind of guys. And that's why Dale Hunter is still probably one of the most successful people in hockey today. If you want to know how hard work works, just, just watch what Dale and Mark do a little bit. And uh, you'll see that however hard you thought you were working, it wasn't what hard work actually is. Oh, it's, it's completely different. Everyone thinks, Oh yeah, because you're in the gym all the time, you're skating all the time, you're working hard. And I'm like, they didn't do that back in the day. They literally got their strength because they were hucking bales and gathering up the, the cows and whatnot. Like that, that takes some effort too. And certainly some strength building there. Um, last thing here before I let you go today, Mike, I got, you know, obviously we talk about the Washington Capitals and this team is getting older and there needs to be obviously a youth movement eventually when number eight hangs up his skates. There's a couple of young players on the London Knights as there are with all OHL teams. Who are some players that you can say right now, albeit we're still only in the going into the second month of the OHL season this year, a couple of young guys that are going to be draft eligible either this year or maybe next year that maybe, you know, Caps management should take a look at maybe taking a pick and maybe try to groom them into being the next NHL or the next Connor McMichael. Well, there's a guy who's off to a great start as a 17 year old. He'll be draft eligible. There'll be the eyes of Ottawa on him because his dad just happens to be DJ Smith, who is the right. head coach of the Ottawa Senators. That's Colton Smith. Great hands, great attitude, uh, good skill set, good size. So he's definitely had an excellent start to the season. And I'm really fascinated to watch the development of another player. I mean, the Knights have a lot of very skilled young players. I could, you know, I could make a list for you, but it would go on and on. But for the next year, a guy named Denver Barkey, who is, he's not the biggest guy in the world, but he himself, and this is not to make a comparison, he himself wants to pattern his game after Mitch Marner. And that's something that, you know, not many people would have the skill set to come close, but that's somebody who kind of fits what Denver Barkey does really well. He's going to be a really exciting player. He's going to put up a lot of points. He's still looking for his first point. Picture this. You're looking for your first point as, as a rookie in a league. 
And he set up a guy who is a draft pick of the Carolina Hurricanes, Bryce Montgomery, who is a, right. a, an excellent defenseman with the London Knights. And Montgomery takes this, this big slap shot. It goes off the crossbar, down and in. It would have been Montgomery's first OHL goal. It was Denver Barkey's first point. And they review it and it gets called back on an offside. So uh, when yes. Denver Barkey starts putting in points, there will be a lot more that come. Uh, but he's going to be somebody to watch for maybe next year's NHL entry draft, not 2022, but 2023. And I'm excited to see what his career does. So those two names, Colton Smith and Denver Barkey. Those were, we're going to definitely quote those when it comes to the draft floor in Montreal we're gonna be like, all right, Washington, these are your guys. <laughs> Tyler, they got drafted second overall. Crap. Should have been worse <laughs> last year. The perks of being a good hockey team. You don't get those high end draft picks anymore. That's uh, it. We, we have been chatting up today with Mike Stubbs, the play-by-play -play voice of the London Knights. Guys, follow him at Stubbs980 for all of your latest London Knights news. Mike, thank you very much for taking the time, as always, to chat. Whether it be the Washington Capitals, whether it be Dale Hunter and his helmet, or the London Knights in general, just kind of appeasing my appeal a little bit. It's always been a pleasure, and I hope, I hope, friend, that you get to work in a studio eventually. I know it's things are a little tougher in Canada than they are down here are in the States. Hopefully back to normal, fully normal soon for you. Thanks, Tyler. I appreciate that. And once again, huge thank you to Mike Stubbs from a couple weeks ago. Don't worry. No, we did not double time and say, Mike, you need to come back. We need to talk about Dale Hunter. No, it just kind of came to we We had some extra time to kill, and I was like, I don't know why. We started, to, we, I before I recorded the interview, this, Mike and I, this has been the second time I've interviewed Mike, but I've listened to him for years now, and London's playing all right right now. They're not world-beating London Knights this year, but they're playing pretty good. And him and I were talking before. And he's like, oh, yeah, if you want some Dale Hunter stories. And I'm like, and I literally asked him, like, all right, Mike, what kind of Dale Hunter stories can you tell? And he's like, and he did a pause. And he's like, I'll keep the clean ones. I'll keep it to the hockey ones, like the good hockey ones. And I'm like, ah, yes, because, you know, obviously Caps fans know Dale Hunter very well. He did a lot to try to just simply win a hockey game. Uh, Pierre Turgeon knows that maybe a little too well. And yeah, Islanders fans probably like, are you kidding me right now? Yes. Uh, so there is that. And obviously, by the way, they don't play till like next month. The Islanders and Capitals, by the way, very interesting because Capitals, I'm sure would love to face New York right now because that is a team that is struggling. But anyways, so regardless, long story short, it was a fun interview because I know there's more stories with Dale Hunter. But I know for a fact that there are some that are just not PG and proper for this program. Before we get to the look around the league, guys, let's talk about none other than Bet Online. Yes, Surrey, because it is Thanksgiving week, and you know what that means? Football! Football, 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 football. Dallas is playing. The Lions are playing. I don't remember the other Thursday night game off the top of my head, but I'll find out tomorrow and I have to write about it for the network that I write for. Nothing goes better with football than turkey and betting. Bet Online has you covered all holiday season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before as Bet Online remains your number one spot for all the sports and hockey action this Thanksgiving season. Head to their new updated desktop or mobile website to sign up today and receive your 50% welcome bonus by using the promo code LOCKED ON to receive the bonus. It's not just football. Bet Online has pro and college hoops, NHL, boxing, UFC, your, even your favorite Vegas casino games. Don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available for the 21-22 season. Bet online is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite sports. Bet online where the game starts. So, yes, look around the NHL. Let's just kind of poke around. Let's just see how everyone's doing. Actually, you know what? Before we get to that point, let's look at the scores for tonight's games. Obviously, no games finished up as I'm recording this, unfortunately. I am sorry. I know you're all heartbroken. Only three, though, to worry about tonight, though. Philadelphia and Tampa. That'll be a kind of a, a big game after a very wild one for the Bolts against Minnesota on Sunday. Philadelphia trying to get back on the winning track. Edmonton going down to Dallas. That's the ESPN plus Hulu game of the night or whatever. And then Chicago taking on Calgary, the top, the towards the top of these Pacific Division Calgary Flames, that is. So let's take a quick look around here. We're not going to go into too much heavy detail. Let's start out west. We'll get to the Metro. Don't worry, kids. That's the reason why I'm part of the show. We saved the best for last, right? Well, for the longest time, it was the best division. And then Pittsburgh and New York went below 500. And now we're having this conversation. Central Division, you have Minnesota up top right now ahead of Winnipeg. 23 points to 22. St. Louis, still the surprise team, if you ask me. Third in that division. 
Nashville in fourth. Dare who I say who's outside of a playoff spot, kids? <gasps> Colorado? That can't be. My Stanley Cup pick, your Stanley Cup pick. Don't you lie about it. Don't backtrack now there, Susan. You know who you picked. You picked Colorado and Tampa on the final because it's the easy pick. You went on bet online. That's what you did. Yeah, you're right. And you know what? You probably, you know, you know what? Maybe Colorado does it this year. But as of right now, it doesn't look pretty. They're fifth with 17 points, only one ahead of Dallas, who's in sixth, Chicago, and then the 4 13 and two. However, red hot Arizona Coyotes at the bottom of the division. Jump to the Pacific Division. You have Calgary and Edmonton, the Battle of Alberta going one and two. Oh, my goodness. I hope they don't finish one and two in the division because that would mean they would not play in the first round, meaning they may not have a chance to play in the playoffs. And we need the Battle of Alberta. We need the Smite Division. Chaos, four-hour games, that's what we need in the postseason. Even though it will be starting at 9.30 at night, I will stay up to watch that chaos every single night because it's so much fun. Best of seven series, come on, give me all eight games because that's what it's going to feel like if Edmonton and Calgary play. Anaheim currently sitting in third. They lost a game or two, but that's what happens when you take a couple days off as well. Vegas has got back into fourth, and then the California team start to tail off from there. You have LA and San Jose, both at or above 500, 8, 7, and 3 LA, 8, 8, and 1. For your San Jose Sharks, Vancouver, and 5, 12, and 1 Seattle rounding out the Pacific. Let's hit the Atlantic Division where the Red Hot Maple Leafs are right behind the still hot, despite not having Sasha Barkov, Florida Panthers. Florida leading the division with 29 points, 27 there is Toronto. Third place, you have Tampa. And despite losing their last four games, I don't know if the Atlantic is just bad now all of a sudden or what. Or, well, this is actually how it's always been, where there's like a few teams at the top and then a lot of teams at the bottom of the division. Detroit is in fourth. Now, as of right now, they're not in a playoff spot, but Detroit's fourth in the division with an 8-9-3 record, and they had a real bad West Coast road trip. That just shows what can happen if you have a bad one of those. They played Dallas. Well, they played Columbus first. They went to Dallas, Vegas, and Arizona. Lost all of them. Only picked up a point when they lost to Arizona in overtime on Saturday. Saturday. Yeah, so not a good trip. The Wings will try to get back. Boston and Buffalo, Buffalo team I'm watching right now, 16 points. Those two teams riding fifth and sixth. And you have Ottawa and, excuse me, Montreal, then Ottawa at the bottom of the division. Ottawa, just, obviously, they lost a few games. They they are they are playing tonight after having three games canceled last week due to COVID issues with that hockey club. They've only played 15 games, so they're, they do have four wins, similar to the Arizona Coyotes but they have played less games. They have 15 while the rest of the division outside of Boston has played more than that. 17 and 18 for a few teams. And we'll hit the Metro here quickly. The New York Islanders at the bottom of the division. Yikes. 5-8-2. and two. Not looking good either. Not playing well in their first couple of games at the UBS Arena. Columbus, the team we see now. It's so stupid. This is, this is how dumb it is right now. Columbus has only played 15 games. Okay? They are 9-6. and six. And they're second to last. I, I get it. This is when you say games in hand, right? I get that. And right now they're up five to four early in the third period of game in this game against the Buffalo Sabres. Boy, they're coming hard to it. Buffalo. They're trying to get that three goal lead back. But that's just funny. Like you have nine wins and you are nowhere near the top of your division. You are well above 500. Penguins are seven, six and four. They're back above 500 after winning the last couple of games. They are playing tonight as well. So by the time you hear this, they could change as well. They could be seven, seven and four. They could be eight, six and four. They could be seven, six and five. I don't know how it could be, but they are six in the division no matter what. The Devils eight, five and three behind Mackenzie Blackwood. Yeah, no more Scott Wedge, but he's poking around down there in Arizona. Mackenzie Blackwood is taking this Devils team and saying, you know what? Hockey Canada over here. I played for your World Junior team once. I played on a bad year, but I did that. That could be third string, even though it's really hard for me not to say, hey, Mark andre Fleur is not playing bad right now. But that's a discussion for another time. Philly sitting there in fourth with 19 points. So actually tied with New Jersey, but they get the tiebreaker based on goal differential and whatnot. Philly is. The Rangers, 11, 4, and 3. Still a very good hockey club. In third, you have your Washington Capitals at 11, 3, and 5. In second, and the 14 and 2 Carolina Hurricanes sitting atop of the division. They are kicking tail, kicking butt. The only team that they're behind in the entire NHL standings are the Florida Panthers, who have 29 points as of right now. And also, Carolina has also done it in two less games. We should probably keep that clear as well. So, a lot of look games to look forward to. Like we said, Montreal on Wednesday, Friday against Florida, Sunday against, or against Carolina, Tuesday against Florida again. 
Big stretch coming up here. Tomorrow we will preview the game against the Montreal Canadiens, kind of look at the team and kind of the struggles they've had. They've not had a real good go of it as of late. We'll talk about that and we'll get you kind of set. I'll because Friday's show will be the recap of the Wednesday game, which will pretty much lead into the preview of the game on Friday night as well. And then obviously be the end of the week. So there you go. Short week here on Lockdown Capitals, but it's okay. We're getting to the stretch of the tough games coming up in December. A lot of tough games for the Capitals. A couple off days as well. It just feels like we're going to hit January. And then we're going to hit like a, like we're like, oh man, we're already at the end of November. And then it's going to hit January. and It's going to stop. And then we're going to have the Olympics, which is going to feel like a sprint through that. And all of a sudden, we're going to be back in the NHL action. And then we're going to hit after the trade deadline, where it's going to feel like another drag. But then all of a sudden, we're at the end of the season. And that's the playoffs. And it's like, oh, my gosh, this first round's forever. And then we're going to snap our fingers again. It'll be the Stanley Cup Finals. And boom, and it'll be the draft. And it'll be free agency. And then we'll be back over again next year. Did that make sense? I really hope it didn't. Because I really hope I confused the heck out of you. Because I know you guys are all listening to this early in the morning. And you haven't had your coffee yet. And I have not had coffee in about 10 hours since I've recorded this. However, I'm tired. So that's where that <laughs> came from. I should wrap it up before any other stupid stuff happens. I'm Tyler Kuehl, the insider of the insider, saying thank you very much for making Lockdown Capitals your first listen and watch on YouTube today and every day. Now go make Lockdown Your Bets your second listen. Lockdown Bets, your one daily one-stop shop for all your gambling needs. Hosted by your boy Q with expert analysis from Lee Sterling. Like I said, we'll be back tomorrow previewing the Montreal Canadiens game. Be sure to follow us at Locked On Caps on the Twitter. Follow me, the insider of the insiders, Tyler Kuehl, at TJKU29. We'll see you all tomorrow for another episode of Locked On Capitals.